thatgreatbusinessshow.com is brought to you by de facto shaving oil, the best anyone can get. Made in Ireland, sold worldwide. Welcome to episode 66 of That Great Business Show, posting on the 17th of December, 2021. I'm your host, Conal O'Mora, and it's always a pleasure to be in your company. Two very different types of food-related companies today. One is an amazing bit of tech. The other is led by a man who is making a very tasty international business out of the humble sandwich. All of that in the next 50 minutes or so. Ahead of that, I'm delighted to say that the Gaelic game board game Banished Door, we featured on the podcast some weeks back is now sold out online and it's fast becoming a collector's item with just a handful of the games available in those top class toy shops like Smith's and Art and Hobby. It's easily the best present for 7 to 14 year olds this year and also don't forget our podcast sponsor De Facto Shaving Oil. The ideal present for anyone that shaves one nail varnish size bottle can last up to a year. It's small lightweight and is ideal for getting through security at airports. Get yours today online at defactoshave.com. That's great business show. Sandwich making as a business is probably the worst and best example to give someone looking for what appears to be a simple business to get into. It's the worst because it is a low value item. It's highly perishable. There are no barriers to entry. Anyone can make a sandwich at home. And a pandemic like COVID means that people no longer need to bring a sandwich to work for lunch. Well, because they're at home. But this is the great business show and we don't do negatives. There's a brilliant sandwich company based in Warren Point, County Down, that makes 40 million products annually and employs 250 people with another 45 people coming on board to handle further expansion. They sell their sangers across the island of Ireland, the UK, Europe, and seemingly the rest of the world. So who now says sandwich making is a bad business idea. Brian Reed is CEO of Delhi Lights. And wait till you hear this story. Welcome to that great business show, Brian Reed. Thanks very much, Connell. Thanks for having me. Ah, you won't say that now when I start with you. Before <laughs> we start, Brian, I think you owe your wife, Jackie, an apology because your website says this about you. The visionary and voice steering the strategic growth and expansion of our business is CEO Brian Reed. I'm Brian. Com- who set up the business? We set it up together. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to ask you one more time. Yeah. Who set up the business? Jackie. <laughs> no, I'm always Jackie, apologizing to Jackie. <laughs> Jackie and her sisters were in New York and they, they were in New Jersey, I think. That's right. And they came home in 19... 19- 94 yeah. with a brilliant idea to make decent sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And then where did you come into it? Johnny come lately? I was at the, I was at the Catering College in Uri actually. I was studying hospitality management. Myself and Jackie were dating so we went away travelling together, came back. Oh, were you over New Jersey with her? No, I wasn't. No, uh, no, I wasn't in no, the bio, I, yeah. I was in the Caribbean on a cruise ship actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I came back and we, we were dating and we decided to go into business together. So that's how we got going in business. So you are like, you. it's not a complete porky that, you, no, no, <laughs> that you're not. steering and what else did you say good stuff like vision and everything else yeah you need to have a vision and we have a vision for the business and myself and Jackie would be would be quite visionary so you've done brilliantly I mean sandwiches of all I mean that's why my lead in said of all of the things sandwich anybody can make a sandwich yeah, we, we took the tough road. I think I think w- w- there was other options for us in business and we probably could have went in, into something a bit more straightforward, but we decided to go into something that we knew. We knew food, we knew Deli Lights was already in existence as a sandwich bar, so we were quite... We were quite focused on it. We wanted to make it work. A few people laughed at us and frowned at us at the time, but we stuck to it and it's worked for us. We've worked quite hard at it. It's a tough industry, very tough. It's always changing. It's fast moving. Um, short shelf life product on the island of Ireland, but we're very driven and we're very ambitious as a couple. We work well together, so um, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, it's been 24 years nearly. So, but we're we're great together. The business is going well. We've had our ups and downs, but we're excited about the future. Well, talk me through all of those stories. To begin with, did you actually start with just one uh, sandwich bar? Yeah, well, Delhi Light started as a sandwich bar in Newry on Monon Street. And um, the girls had been traveling to the US and came back and decided to go and open a sandwich bar together. So they did that. And as I say, Jackie was working in the sandwich bar. I was at the catering college and we got back to, we went traveling, came back 
and started to go into the sandwich bar at night time. So we would make the sandwiches at night and deliver them the next morning in a small van that we bought. So myself and Jackie decided to, to fill a need in the retail stores around Uri, uh, filling stations, schools. Xerox was being built in Dundalk at the time and that took us over the border. So then we went from there. Uh, hang on a second. No, 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 no. You just didn't rock up to Xerox and say, how are you? You obviously had to knock on doors and charm the pants off them, yeah? Yeah, we did knock the door, yeah. We went up and knocked the door. We parked the van outside. We walked up with a box of samples and we did the whole selling thing. So Jackie was doing a lot of the selling at the early stages and I was doing a lot of the distribution, looking after things, the operations side of it. But yeah, it was a hard sell. I was driving around Dublin every night, three o'clock in the morning, delivering sandwiches into different units, offices, factories, retail stores, and just built it up. So you drove from Newry down to Dublin, which is no, not, not a huge trip. But then how long would you spend down driving around Dublin? I would spend every night. I would do six nights a week. I would start at 1am and drive through the night until 8 o'clock the next morning oh and drive home. Oh, God. Six a, nights a week, yeah. That's a graft. I did that for about eight years. Oh my yeah. good God. And you're still here to tell yeah, the story. still here. Still. And you also look about 10. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Still doing it. Um, we've, we've guys go out every night. We deliver our products all night, every night. So it goes out all over Ireland. So it's all fresh, made ne- ne- today for tomorrow. So it's a great business we have. And you, the brand is Deli Lights, but you, yeah. did I see on the website that you would brand, you know, Connell O'Moran sandwiches if I want them and stuff like that? Yeah, so we, we grew the business initially as Deli Lights branded products, but then a lot of people were saying when they were building their, their food-to-go businesses in the island of Ireland at the time, the Celtic Tiger was was happening and there was a lot of UK retailers coming into the Irish market. So they wanted us to contract manufacture and we grew the business contract manufacturing as well as looking after our own brand. So we still do a lot of that, but we've been more heavily focused on the Deli Lights brand recently. We also have... Um, because we see the future in, in our own brand. We want, we, we, yeah, we've spent 10 years building other people's brands, but now we want to focus on our own brand. So we've also got the Kitchen Vigilantes, which is a plant-based f- uh, uh, food-to-go brand. And we've got Planet Cafe, which is a heat-to-eat um, export brand. I love Kitchen Vigilantes. Yeah. That's a great brand. Yeah, it's fully plant-based. It's exciting. Uh, and who came up with that name? We came up with ourselves. He worked with a design company and just picked a few names and we worked through it. My sister was actually involved in it as well. So Gemma was involved and we worked on the brand name and the products are excellent. So they're in a lot of retail stores at the minute. And you're not just Island of Ireland, you're across the UK, into Europe. And yeah. did I also see the Middle East? Yeah, yeah. Now you're getting into frozen at that stage because you're not sending, you're not driving to the Middle East with your sandwiches We're not. overnight. We're not. <laughs> but uh, no, the Island of Ireland was fresh for us. So we were able, able to deliver fresh products in the Island of Ireland. But on the, on the, to get out of Ireland, we realized there was a number of opportunities were presenting themselves for the innovative products that we make. So we said, let's try and build a shelf life into the product so we can export it. And we've done that. How do you do that? We've de- developed a wee technology that we can use to, to capture the, the, the freshness. I love the way you say that. We've developed a wee technology. Yeah. Come on, give us some idea. What are you doing? Well, we're capturing the freshness of the product after it's made. We use certain ingredients to build the freshness into the product. So whenever we freeze it, it's a new defrost that product, whether you're in Dubai or whether you're in America, it'll taste fantastic. It'll be, it'll taste like it's just been made in, behind the counter. It's and who fantastic. came up with that technology for you? We did. We worked with universities to come up with it. We worked together. It was an innovation project and, and it's been very successful for us. So we knew from what we were doing that we were onto something very exciting and it's now enabled us to take those innovative ingredients and those exciting products and take them around the world. I'm really intrigued now because I want to find out what this is all about. What kind of technology is it? Is it like, is it a different kind of a flower or is it a, some seaweed or something like that? Yeah, well, there's a number of things and we've worked with suppliers to enable them to put the products together in a certain way that allows us to to make sure it's got it, the he's maximum shot. No, I'm not going to tell you the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but to make sure that's that really we, clever. But to make sure that that the product at the end of its shelf life is is fantastic. So oh, how long is the shelf life? One year. Good God! Yeah. So so all of that stuff I gave early on about sh- low shelf life or short shelf life that's all bull. Absolutely. One year. One year. So we. But is that stuff for sandwich? It is making... for a panini, a burrito, a, a to- we call them toaster. So it's an Irish toasted sandwich, a toaster. So I saw a T.O. Yeah, for the yeah, STA. So yeah. it's a ham and cheese. We have a chicken and bacon. We can, we can export that They're product around the world. <laughs> yeah, they're lovely. So we've got innovative ingredients going in there. We've got concepts and they're really suitable for people on the move. The Ireland of Ireland food to go market is very advanced. So it's a window to the world in terms of innovation and concepts. Do you actually believe that now? You're not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. There's, yeah. there's um, visits and best practice uh, guides take 
people around Irish retail all the time, showing them how we adapt so quickly with food trends and food concepts. So absolutely, we're taking those ideas now and, and able to bring them into other markets. And you better give Invest in I a shout out because they've just given you the guts of half a million quid. So uh, they've yeah. obviously been good to you. Invest in I have been very supportive um, from day dot. We were an export business because of where we're based and more in point, we were, we're taking product across the border every day. So we're always exporting in our <laughs> eyes. We're always exporting and they supported us to do yeah. that. But then more recently... You are ideally placed for that. I aren't mean, we? <laughs> I, know, I remember, um, what do you call them? Um, oh, the Glenn Dimplex, uh, what do you call him? Um, Mr. Martin, 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 Martin Nocton. Yeah. Like he's... I, I had long chats with him once upon a time and that was his first export market from uh, south to north yeah. uh, and that was it. I mean, we, we, we've we been delivered into the south now for, as, from the day, day dot from we started, we've been exporting in, in our eyes but more recently they've they've realised that we're a scaling business so we're in the scaling programme with Invest in I so they see big potential in the company and they've backed us and you know, they've been very supportive so we're, we're, we're excited about it. And where are you actually manufacturing these sandwiches? Or do you even call them sandwiches? Because they're obviously something bigger or better than yeah, a sandwich. We, we call them sandwiches. Yeah, we still call them sandwiches. And they're all manufactured in Warren Point. So we have a factory in Warren Point. And we're... And tell the truth, have you ever put margarine into a sandwich? We did at one time, yeah, <laughs> oh. but it didn't go down well, yeah. It, it just can ruin a sandwich. Lots yeah. of mayonnaise, would, uh, margarine can ruin a sandwich. But yeah, we, 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 we make everything in Warren Point. So we're expanding the site at the minute. We have a, a purpose-built um, production kitchen there and we're... We're able to manufacture everything. And, and of your 250 odd, are they, how many of those are actually making sandwiches only now? Because obviously you've got drivers and marketing and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we've got 150 making product between yeah. picking and, and making sandwiches and dispatch. And then we have a distribution team. We have a small marketing team and accounts team. So it's made up yeah. in all the different departments, new product development, innovation and stuff. So And you're hiring another 50 or 45 we or are, whatever. Yeah. 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 And what are they going to do? going to help us with on the innovation side and we're looking to recruit um, graduates to come in and help us take some of the ideas that are happening in food in other markets. Um, great people down in Smurfit, um, UCD Smurfit, yeah. Yeah, with their um, food marketing or they're just a marketing business. There's a lovely girl who was working with us on this program called Alana Henry. Yeah. So I'm going to give Alana a shout out and I'm going to introduce you to Alana. Yeah, She'll be great. Now she hasn't graduated yet, but she's got two other degrees already. Bright, Brilliant. Bright girl. Well, that's what we're looking to do. Bring in, bring in um, intelligence to the business that will help us keep ahead of I the curve. I thought you were, what did I say? The visionary and the voice. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> you don't need intelligence. We do. We need more. We, we, we know we need more help. We need, we need brains. We need ambition to come into the company behind myself and Jackie. We have a fantastic team, but we're always looking for new talent. People with an, uh, a thirst, a curiosity. One of our core values is being curious. So we're looking for curiosity. People that have a passion for food who can, who can take us to the next level. Are you in, into any of the UK multiples? We are, yeah. We're in. We've 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 a couple of different partnerships in the UK that we work through. They're mainly food service companies, and they take product for us into into multiples in the UK. It's very interesting. Like it's multi layered. You'd imagine that a for efficiency and for margin, the most important thing to them is that all the multiples would just go straight to the manufacturer. But now you're telling me that there's a circuitous route. There is, yeah. Most of the multiples have supply chain partners that they work through. So we would be servicing the supply chain partners and then they would take the product into the store and manage the category for them. So that's how we're building the business is working through those supply chain partners that hold stock and and deliver product into store. But there's huge opportunities in the UK market and, and the fact that we're based in the north allows us to deliver product into the UK as well. Which so, brings me neatly yeah. along because I have been reading about you talking about Brexit. Yeah. The B word. The B word, yeah. It's made your life difficult to say yeah. the least, but there have been huge changes. Talk me through the changes that you were forced on you, if you like. Yeah, well, when the Brexit vote happened, it was quite a, a worry for us because we manufacture, you know, everything in more in point. We'd cross the border, as I've talked about uh, every day. So, you know, it was a worry. We had to take advice, get um, one of the big accountancy firms come in and looked at the impact of tariffs. So it was going to be fairly damaging to the business. So we were looking at manufacturing down south. We were looking at um, things like two different sites. How are we going to sustain the fresh business in Ireland, never mind the, mar- the export markets? So it was a huge potential problem for us. But 
when the Northern Ireland Protocol came along and allowed us to have the, the dual access, it was to fantastic. The best of both worlds. Yeah. But in fairness, we, we stayed very positive throughout. We didn't look at it like it was going to be detrimental to the business. We, we, we kept a positive outlook as we do in everything, COVID included. And we just, we said, we'll get around it. We're entrepreneurs. We'll work through it. We're determined. We haven't worked this hard for so long to let it beat us. And, it's went our way, I think. And we've been very vocal about the protocol and how good it could be for Northern Ireland business. And I continue to, to beat that drum because somebody has to do it. And I feel as if you have to support the all Ireland economy because it's been very good for us. And we've a lot of support from business south of the border. And so did I see that you are beginning now to uh, source product from the Republic now that you were getting from uh, Britain before. Did yeah. you read that? Yeah, yeah. I mean... You see, I, I do a little bit of research. I'm yeah. not just a pretty face. But there's been there's a couple of aspects to that. So one of the biggest aspects to that has been the lack of labour availability in the UK. So the second aspect would be we've realised that we should be sourced on the island of Ireland anyway because... Um, and it's a big opportunity for manufacturers here to step up and, and replace that product that was coming from the UK. What would you like? Who would you like? What kind of businesses would you like to get in contact with you? Well, um, people like some meat producers, some um, artisan, plant-based ingredient producers. And they're not whacking on your door, not knocking on the door. They're not... Like, well, they are. They are. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've got great suppliers here, but it's probably increased because of the labour shortage in the UK. They weren't coming looking to supply us anymore because they couldn't. They were looking after their customers in the UK. So Gee. we found that it's mad, isn't it? we were struggling to get ingredients anyway. Yeah. Um, things like meat products were maybe bringing it across the water. But on the other side of it, there's been huge opportunities then because they haven't been able to bring sandwiches across the Irish Sea from the UK because of Brexit. And, and we've been able to take advantage of that because we focused quite heavily on the brand, the Delhi Lights brand. We've put a lot of emphasis on that. So they see us as an, an ideal partner to, to pick up that business. And you're raising money, am I right? We are raising money, yeah. You're raising quite the amount of money. Yeah. So we're, we're looking to go into the US. We're looking to, to take the business forward. We're looking at it. But the US, uh, I, yeah. I knew you were going to the US yeah. and I still can't get my yeah. head around it. Yeah. To ship a sandwich to probably the, one of the world's greatest sandwich makers. Yeah, well, we're not necessarily going to ship product. We're looking to see is there a potential partner over there that we could uh -huh. we could work with, or we maybe look at some form of acquisition. But we are looking to take the business onto a larger footprint. Um, I into, love the ambition. Into, yeah, where does that come from? I think it's um, myself and Jackie both left school quite young. We left school without any qualifications. We felt that we owed to ourselves. Which went in the to family. Catering college. Yeah, but yeah. it was kind of wasn't there the route that was. It was well trodden by a lot of people at the time. So yeah. we both feel as if we want to, we owe something to ourselves to, to deliver um, for the brand and for our families and stuff. So we're quite ambitious. It is very curious. And I understand completely where you're coming from. What drives people? What drives you? Is that like, if you were to sit down mm. and listen to yourself, which yeah. you will hopefully through this podcast, you say, am I completely mad? Yeah. I mean, you work and you have worked really hard. Yeah. And you want more. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's all we know. It's kind of, I enjoy it. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, a lot of people complain about work and complain about business. I actually enjoy it. I get up and the first I thing I think business. about is business. Work, yeah. First thing, thing I think about is how do I make the team better? How do I make the business better? How do I deliver for this brand? How do I, because... I'm not part of the family. I'm, a, I'm a, 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 an in-law, if you know what I mean. So I came into the business as a husband. So I felt at times that I owe it to the, to the company and we want to take it to the next level where we can and make sure that we maximise our opportunity where, wherever we can. And the business coming from Newry, from South Armagh, we want to make sure that we, we take it as far as we can. And where or how far can you go? I'm not sure. I, I, I believe that... Um, we want to do things right. So we want to make sure that whatever we do, we do it responsibly. We're, we're going through the B Corp journey at the minute. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So we want to make sure that our footprint and our sustainability focus is there. So it's not, you know, growth at all costs. It's growth in the right way and doing things responsibly. Again, one of our values is be responsible. We want to make sure that we're looking after our people, looking after the, the supply chain and in a sustainable way. So we take it as far as we can when we realize that we've done enough to, to satisfy ourselves that we are delivering on what we we want. We have a vision for the business. We would like to see it in certain places. We'd like to see us doing certain things. So whenever we get it, whenever we, if I ever wake up someday and think that's enough, that'll be it. And if you came to that point, what would you do? 
I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what I'd do. I'd probably... Golf, sail, run, jog, cycle. I play a bit of golf. I, I'm a big football fan. I, I'm a bit of a slave to football. I, I, I watch a lot of football. I'm involved in football clubs, so I, it takes up a lot of my time as well if I'm not in business. It's a bit of a distraction and we all need it. So, um, But yeah, I mean, I don't. I can't see it coming to them. We probably will have to take the foot off the gas maybe at some point, but at the minute I'm enjoying it. Funding. Yeah. Who do you want to fund and or how much are you looking for? We're going to need some money. We're going to need some money to do it. Um, KV, how much? It's hard to know at this point. At this oh, point, it's too early. Then. You yeah. know. Yeah, it's hard it's to know. Three million, four million, five million, six million. I need more than that. 20 we'd million? Need more than, yeah, we'd need, we'd need that to do what we oh, need to do. Yeah. for serious money? With serious money, yeah. We need it, we, we're on the acquisition trail, so we're looking to find a partner that has equal values to ourselves that we can partner with and help us produce our products. The, the export brand Planet Cafe is a f- fantastic brand that we've developed and we see a huge potential uh, with the change from, um, you know, petrol and diesel and, you know, over to the EV, the, the market of zero touch. People don't want to, the labour market's drying up so we we see our product well suited to that market and we, we need to be able to deliver on that so we will need a few quid yeah well <laughs> and the other one is what could you know our listener we call them Team GBS what could Team GBS do for you I will be without question introducing you to Connecticut yeah. because we want you to base yourselves there yeah. uh, because it's halfway between New York and uh, Boston but of course you know that because you're oh no you weren't there so <laughs> it was your wife who was there yeah. because, but the other one what, what else would you like contact anywhere in the world is there anybody in, or any place in the world that you'd like contact um, not not specifically at the minute just to raise the profile of the business raise the profile of the Planet Cafe brand that we're developing and open us up to maybe some influential people that are in the US in retail that we can have a conversation with, like we can we can speak to about um, our values as a company and make sure they're aligned so we can do business together. So raising the profile of the brand and what we're doing on our story is what would be important for us. That sounds all right. Mm-hmm. And another big company that we had on the podcast in the past was Danone. Did you know they're a big yeah, company? That's yeah. right. Yeah, fantastic. Maybe they sound like a, a partner for you. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, they're only massive. Yeah, they're only massive. There's a number of big companies that are B now. So, I mean, a company like that that has the same values, the same vision as us, and the same way of doing business. So. Ideally, you know, introduction like that would be fantastic. Um, okay. Well, we'll see what we can do there. Uh, final question, because that's what we always ask uh, as our final question is, who would you hire in a heartbeat? I guess somebody that I've been admiring for a while and I went to see him last, I went to see him about two months ago in London was Gary Vaynerchuk. So Gary's a, I'm a big fan yeah. of Gary. Um, ben from Jim Shark has teamed up with him, so he got there before me, but... Somebody like Gary would be, I have a big um, interest in marketing at the minute. Marketing was an area of the business I sort of ran away from for a long time, but now I'm sort of in the middle of it and I'm really enjoying it. So he seems to be um, in the I mi- saw him just yesterday investing in something. I can't remember what it was, but he is, he's, the, the, the checkbook is open, you know? Yeah. He well, he's, be- a, he's an interesting character and he, he, the marketing side of the business is, he knows marketing inside out. So that's, oh, yeah. as we develop yeah. the brands internationally, we want to make sure that we have somebody ideally on the team that can help us with that. And uh, he could certainly open some doors for Absolutely, you. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, big time. Wow, that's all I'll say. Fantastic story. I like you're a little hidden gem as well. We are a hidden gem, yeah, but that's that's just the type of people we are. We're quite private. We're uh, quite industrious, but um, industrious, we're ambitious. Industrious, are, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, continued success. Anything, anything, anything we and Team GBS can do for you, please knock on the door. It's wide open for you. And uh, we will hopefully see you back again. And if anybody wants to give you what we call wise money or clever money, your door is open for that as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that is Brian Reed, who is CEO of Daily Lights. Brian Reed, thank you so much for thank joining you. us Thanks on for having me. that great business show. Make one small switch. Switching from shaving foam to all-natural de facto shaving oil will give you the smoothest, softest shave ever. Switching from shaving oil to de facto helps stop 20 million non-recyclable shaving foam cans go to landfills every year. Switching from shaving oil to de facto will save your skin, your pocket and your planet. DeFactoShave.com 
Everyday accounting can be a bit of a drama for SMEs. However, BigRedCloud.com takes the drama away with its simple and easy to use cloud-based accounting and payroll software designed for SME owners. Raise and send invoices, manage VAT reports and obligations, run management reports, link directly to Irish banks, automatically import purchase invoices and so much more. All with five-star customer support. BigRedCloud.com, 100% Irish owned and a proud member of Team GBS. Subscribe today to That Great Business Show on your favourite podcast platform, including Apple and Spotify. Tis the season for indigestion, stomach cramps and constipation, which can all be signs of overindulgence, but more seriously for sufferers, also signs of irritable bowel syndrome. IBS is a digestive condition estimated to affect one in 10 people worldwide, and that is a big number, and which in turn makes it a big business opportunity. Food Marble is an Irish early stage company that addresses that vast IBS market. They've already raised 5.5 million in funding and sold 25,000 of their small handheld breathalyzer type units that measures human breath and suggests what could be causing any irritation in the gut. Based on this feedback, it's possible to avoid certain foods and ease the symptoms of IBS. Angus Short is Food Marble CEO, and he has a PhD in power systems engineering, so nothing to do with food then. And you all know we love those twists and turns in people's professional lives. Welcome to that great business show, Angus Short. Thanks, Colonel. Great to be on the show. What is a power system engineer and why have you got a PhD in it? Yeah, so really power systems is around, um, you know, uh, providing electricity to people uh, in their daily lives, you know. So uh, what I was doing is really about, at that time, was really about uh, wind energy and electric vehicles and how we can maximize both uh, and the synergies between them. And uh, so it was kind of a technical and economic analysis of that. And And you gave it up for rock and roll to make food marble because you could be working with Elon Musk making, ah, don't forget about millions, making billions. (laughs) Yeah, well, so... I guess I'd finished a PhD and um, I'd started in a job in the in the energy space and, you know, was really enjoying it actually. It was another startup in, in Ireland uh, called Electroroot. Uh, but it was really actually my um, my wife, well, girlfriend at the time, Grace. Uh, she, uh, I always knew she had maybe lactose intolerance um, or, you know, some, some difficulties with her digestion. But um, I guess... Sure, it wasn't just you. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. But... Uh, you know, we we moved in together, and you know, I could I could see that you know this these digestive problems were affecting her a lot more than I expected, and it was really difficult for her. Um, like, really eating was was a minefield, and you know w- what impact that could have on people's lives when eating is just such a you know such a crucial part of everyday life. Um, and yeah, I suppose I just wanted to see what was out there and if I could help. Um, and, you know, did some research because I still had access to the research papers and everything after the PhD. So did some research and found out about, um, uh, you know, breath testing and found out that it could be used to, to, to deal with some of these problems. It's a clever bit of kit. It's not unlike this thing that they do. I shouldn't say this, but <laughs> what's crossed my mind, it's not unlike this thing that they're doing with cows, trying to uh, stop them belching methane. Because yes. you started with testing for hydrogen, but I've read that you've now moved on to methane. Isn't that right? Yeah. So our, our second generation device, which it's actually, it's on pre-order now at the moment for a website, but our second generation device um, is, as well as measuring hydrogen, is also measuring methane. And so... These are both gases that are produced in in pretty small quantities, but enough to be detectable on the breath, and they're an indicator that what you're what you're you know what you're currently eating while you're taking the breath test is not being fully digested. So, talk me through how it how it works because you have to do quite an amount of testing. Am I right? Well, so there's there's a couple of uh, kind of uh, ways at a high level you can you can use it. So you can use it day to day. You know, record what you're eating in in the app. So we've got a big food library, and you can you can select of a thousand eating. foods. Is it or is it gone bigger yeah. than that again? Yeah. So so it's growing all the time. So yeah, it's more than a thousand foods, and um, and you know we're we're expanding that all the time. But you you can pick you can pick from the foods in the database to 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 
tell us what you're eating and we know what's inside of those foods. That's a crucial bit. So we, so we know what are some of those hard to digest. They're sometimes called FODMAPs. So these, they're fermentable carbohydrates. So it's a particular type of carbs that, you know, often we have difficulty breaking them down or absorbing them. But, you know, bacteria can break down, you know, much more than we can. So so once once that undigested food makes its way towards the end of the digestive system where the bacteria live, they munch it down and that generates the gases. So it, Methane. Yeah, so, so hydrogen is, and methane. Yeah, exactly. And methane is another word for fart. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so yeah, I mean, fart, fart like, like your farts will contain hydrogen, carbon dioxide and methane and other gases. So there's a load of stuff in there. You know, hydrogen and methane don't actually smell. Like they're, they're completely odorless. But there's other stuff, you know, that can be, <laughs> can be on your fart that does smell. And, and you know, the, the, it, what's interesting is we're like, as we develop, we're, we're going to be adding more and more of, uh, we're going to be able to measure more and more of these gases and be able to, you know, for the first time measure these things at scale. Because, People don't people don't realize that there's a lot of stuff on your breath that is indicative of what's happening inside your body. I presume it makes sense because if you're feeling rotten, there's always a you know you, you almost feel that you've got bad breath, don't you? Yeah. So it's 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 not going to like you know for the for the issues we're dealing with, it will tend not to manifest itself as bad breath. Some people will have you know things like hydrogen sulfide on the breath and. And that can be related to certain digestive issues and, and in fact, to certain bacteria that can be, well, in the mouth, but then also in the gut that can cause that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a difficult one to, the, the problem is when you eat something and you're not digesting it, you don't really get an indication until it's too late, until everything's built up because, you know, the gases are being produced over a number of hours and all, the, all of these processes can take anywhere between four hours and over one day. So, you know, you, well, you're eating food and it might be digesting for, for many hours and you could be eating multiple meals over that period of time. So, so like once you start to feel bad, you're like, okay, what was the last thing I ate? And you, you attribute the symptoms to what you just ate. But often it can be, like most of the effect can be from something you ate maybe for breakfast or maybe even the night before. That's the problem, isn't it? Is that uh, it's the variety and then yeah. you have to track it all. Now, I've read some of the reviews uh, online about your product. And one of them, there's an American guy who wasn't terribly complimentary because he said, oh, you haven't got such and such a food and such and such a food. And I'm thinking, I don't even know the food. See, he was talking <laughs> about, he was talking about jalapeno, bingenero, something. And I said, well, I don't know what that is. So I suppose that, uh, is it applicable, say? Just take countries, China, Thailand, yeah, well, Japan. So, like our food database is mostly centered around where, you know, you know, our customers are. So so that's mostly uh, US, Canada, um, UK and Ireland, Australia, New Zealand. And so that's really where English language food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you know, we we did some translations in the past. It's very it's very hard to kind of like like maintaining a like a, a comprehensive database uh, and also translate into different languages is, is, is a nightmare, trust me. But um we've we've got some it's interesting. We're we're launching some technology actually early next year where you know, we've got a ton of stuff in our database, but there will like there's hundreds of thousands or millions of food products in the That's world. That's what I was so, thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How can so, you track them all? So how do you track them all? So, but what we're doing is we've we've been able to develop this. It's kind of AI based technology. So using artificial intelligence. But what we do is, if somebody scans a food product, so anything with a barcode, what we can do is we'll, we'll find out first of all what's the name of the product, what's the ingredients list, and we'll start connecting that information to information sources that we have. And so what we can do is we can work out how much of these hard to digest uh, you know, foods or, or components are in the food. So, so we can kind of, so if somebody wants to log some unusual food, they can scan it in and we can, we can automatically work out, okay, what's, what's in that food? And, and so basically any sort of product you should be able to now scan in. You from a startup, you've done what, to my mind, incredibly well to have sold, if I'm right, 25,000? Is that what you're at? Yeah, I think we're at 30,000 now. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a bit of uh, this kind of stuff. It's always moving, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30,000. That is a really, really top. Now, do you, did you imagine that you were going to sell that or were you hoping for huger than that when by this time? Well, so like, for us, you know, 
the early stages are always about work, like trying to have the best possible product and align it as much as possible with what people need. So, you know, certainly that takes time. It was like, we had a really fast start. So we've had like, you know, uh, really good take up from, uh, you know, like with a really small team at, in the first place, being able to to get up to these sorts of numbers. But, you know, the scope of what we're doing, you know, it's, it's you know, pretty much about one in eight people worldwide are affected by IBS. Which is huge. I huge mean, huge, of, huge, huge. It's about a billion people. So it's a huge, huge amount of people. And, and you know, it goes beyond that because, you know, some of these, the gases we're measuring on the breath relate to other digestive issues and other health issues. Uh, well. Hannah, I was thinking along these lines, you obviously are not just going to stop at IBS. You have other ideas. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, like we're, we're going to, you know, we're never going to, uh, we're going to continue to build on what we're doing from the IBS perspective. But, you know, there's, like, it's interesting with digestive issues, uh, they're very related and the symptoms are very similar. So like there's a condition called SIBO, for example, S-I-B-O, which uh, it, 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 like, it, it occurs a lot in people with IBS. It occurs a lot in people with other issues like things like diabetes and, uh, and other issues like that. Um, you know, we're already starting to offer, um, you know, a solution for that. More from a kind of healthcare perspective, because often the, the the treatment is an antibiotic. So you know we have to be we have to be careful on that front. Because you cannot be seen to be a medicine, isn't that it? Well, so the 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 devi- like we have a healthcare device that's a medical device that is being used by doctors. But you know, so like, what's a little handheld? Just to describe it, it is not much bigger than a box of matches. Really, I know it's five yeah. centimeters square, isn't that it? it yeah, so it's, it's tiny. It's, exactly, it's a tiny device. And then device. you blow into it. Yes, you you blow into the device. It's measuring the gases on your breath in real time. So it's working out all of these little molecules in your breath, and and so you know if there's a large amount of them, like so if if the amount has increased since you last took a breath test, we'll tell you okay, what you know based on what you've logged, what are the likely foods that cause that you know cause that issue for you? Because if those gases start to build up, that's when the the symptoms start to occur. Make one small switch. Switching from shaving foam to all-natural de facto shaving oil will give you the smoothest, softest shave ever. Switching from shaving oil to de facto helps stop 20 million non-recyclable shaving foam cans go to landfills every year. Switching from shaving oil to de facto will save your skin, your pocket and your planet. DeFactoShave.com Everyday accounting can be a bit of a drama for SMEs. However, BigRentCloud.com takes the drama away with its simple and easy to use cloud-based accounting and payroll software designed for SME owners. Raise and send invoices, manage VAT reports and obligations, run management reports, link directly to Irish banks, automatically import purchase invoices and so much more. All with five-star customer support. BigRentCloud.com, 100% Irish owned and a proud member of Team GBS. It's all go like Chrissy Gno on that great business show.com. That great business show. How big are you hoping to go? Yeah, well, you know, I think there's just there's just so much we can do in digestive health. Like, there, you know, it, it, there's such an, a range of conditions that we can help with. So we do really want to make sure that we're able to do the most we can in that area. It does go beyond that. Like even, you know, one of the gases that we're, we're uh, starting to do testing with you know that's 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 also relevant for certain heart conditions. You know it's re- relevant for really? degenerative heart brain disease. Really? Yeah, yeah, because you know in a lot of cases what you'll have is you've got some sort of inflammatory response. You know in a disease, and and so it like there's certain molecules on your breath that will appear, and if you can measure them, then you can see like for example for for some sort of condition you might be doing a treatment and you know as as the condition is improving you may see that the levels of a certain molecule on the breath start to go down. So it could be a way of, of monitoring how treatment's going. Uh, it could be a way of screening. It could be, you know, if you want to check, well, you know, is there a possibility I, I you know, I could, I could have some issue and, and, and if it came up po- like uh, positive, if the test came up positive, maybe then you go for further tests in a hospital. So there's different ways, we, like, you know, it could be diagnosis, it could be screening, there's different options there. But breath is just such a convenient thing for people that, you know, compared to other tests. You have raised quite an amount of money, 5.5 million. Yes. For an early stage, that is not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, no, we have. And, uh, you know, we're actually raising more money at the moment. Uh, so How much more? Actually, uh, well, it's probably going to be something like six six million euros on top of the five point five. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, <laughs> going on all this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just you know. 
like there's a there's a lot of scope here. So I, I and think who's giving you the who gave you the five point five or is that all five, yeah, it's, it's between it's between different investors. All you know, it's all. Did you do crowdfunding as well? We we did we did a we did a crowdfunding campaign last year on a, a platform called Cedars, and that does really worked worked out really well. Um, but yeah, it's it's a range of investors. Like some of them are more like kind of. Um, you know, VC investors, and and some of them are more, you know, are more like angel investors. So, the, if you're getting into VC, they're beginning to see something in you because obviously VCs is what we call wise money yeah. that already knows a sector. Yeah, yeah. So, so like from an early stage, we've got an investment from one, you know, one of the, you know, a, a real global VC called SOSV that actually has some roots in Ireland. It has. That is Sean O'Sullivan, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. So, so his uh, his firm, they've uh, they've supported us from the start, and you know, invested at each of our funding rounds. Actually, and for the next round, where are you looking for our? Yeah, so I mean, are you going to go to San Francisco or? Well, so, so so some of some of the investors who've committed already are in the US. Uh, some are existing investors, and uh, you know, there's also some European investors who are who are looking at it seriously. Now, you have not told me anything at all about this. The next question is: I just get the feeling that you've got some other really big ideas. I don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, are you one of those guys who sits in his bed or <laughs> in the shower or whatever, thinking big ideas? Yeah, well, I mean, this, I, you know, I think when we've got a technology that's this powerful that can help so many people, I think we have a, you know, a duty in a way to to take it to its sort of natural conclusion and to 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 you know, have something that can really, because for us, you know, it's nice to be able to test for things and to give people some some information, but. We want to get to a stage where somebody can come in from the start, they have an issue, we can bring them through a series of steps to where they're feeling good over the medium to long term. So that's ultimately where we want to get to. Um, And whether that's, you know, partly from a consumer perspective, partly from a kind of more healthcare perspective, um, you know, we think we're, we're relevant to both. There was one downside that I read about the device. You know what I'm going to say? There was a guy, he's a... Uh, a drinks, um, uh, what do you call it? He's uh, not an analyst, but he, he writes about drink in the US. <laughs> and oh, he yeah. said, He's a journalist. Yeah, journalist, yeah. yeah. And he said that you cannot, you're not allowed to drink as in alcohol and then blow into this device that it can, I won't yeah. say it blows it to smithereens, but it, <laughs> it sends it off the Richter scale. Yeah, well, some of those sort of fermented uh, product, you know, when it comes to alcohol, it, it's a case of where, you know, if you if you drink, if you have a drink, you know, just wait a little bit of time before. You, you know, not only a little bit of time, it's an, uh, an hour per unit, isn't that it? Well, so that's kind of been on a conservative side. So that's kind of assuming that it clears out of your system completely. But uh, And if you've got pr- stomach problems, you probably aren't drinking anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that would like, you know, it's certainly something like uh, alcohol definitely, ex- you know, accelerates the passage of food to your gut. If you accelerate too much, that's going to be a problem. Um, but yeah, alcohol in general can be, you know, you probably want to ease off if you've got digestive issues. So what's the next big idea? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, we've got a lot of really interesting things we're doing from uh, from an artificial intelligence perspective, because, you know, this sort of area is perfect for where you've got a lot of different types of data. You've got people with a lot of quite specific issues. And if, if you could pull together a lot of data on a kind of purely aggregated, anonymous sort of way, um, you start to be able to make really good patterns. So you start to see, okay, instead of just kind of guessing, okay, we'll give you this, you know, from the doctor's perspective, we'll give you, you know, we'll give you this medicine or we'll try this or try that. If you can categorize people into groups and be able to show, uh, you know, demonstrate like the efficacy of certain approaches, you know, ultimately you're, you're going to a place where somebody can come in, there's a lot more certainty about what the issue is, and there's also a lot more certainty about like how to get over the issue. You really haven't told me what the next big idea is. <laughs> I'm trying to see yeah. where what the idea would be so that now I'll try to be an early investor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, well I mean, I'm like very focused on, on food marble. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff well, going on. Why is it called there. food marble? Yeah, so like the, the way we were looking at that is it's interesting, you know, with, uh, you know, like a marble, like a kind of the glass sort yeah. of kid. So, yeah, so um, every every marble is, it, this is a bit corny, like every every marble is is unique. And, and, you know, truly everyone's digestive system is just completely unique. Like even if, you know, I don't know if you've got like a, a brother or a twin, like even with twins who are like, twins are genetically identical. 
they, like they have the same genes. Um, but you know, twins can have radically different gut microbiomes. So all all of those, you know, bacteria inside somebody's gut, that has a huge effect on on health, on behavior, on all sorts of things. And 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 we're, we're just all so different. And it's really random how that occurs, like like how that develops from a young age. It is a massive addressable market. What did I read? Billions? How many billions is it worth? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's like it, it's a, it's a, it's a huge market. Whatever way you slice and dice it, I mean, there's a ton of ways of doing that. But like you know, there is just a, a huge need for for more precision in what we're doing from a from a healthcare perspective. Yeah, be careful how you answer this next one because your wife <laughs> nowadays, uh, your former girlfriend, she is listening. Or she will be listening because she wants to see how great you are. Yeah. How is Grace's health now? Has it <laughs> has, has your food marble improved her health? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's really interesting because um, initially it was really helpful for her in terms of being able to see, like even with her early, because, you know, it started out with a prototype with Grace, uh, like something I put together myself and, even at that stage, she was able to detect, okay, this is something I can eat. This is something I can't eat. I mean, it's really, really basic and everything, but it was still useful. Um, but what's been interesting over over these number of years, she's actually at a point where her sensitivity to certain foods has really diminished to the point where, you know, you wonder whether she still has a condition. So, you know, that's not something that, you know, like we're, we're definitely not saying that's something that we expect to happen for everyone. But it's interesting that, you know, with the right sort of approach to where, you know, you're identifying what you can and can't eat and then, you know, progressing into more long-term approaches where you can then start to boost your gut microbiome in different ways, you, you know, you can potentially overcome this. So, you know, I think that's a... You that know, is some breakthrough, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If, if you can do that, yeah. yeah. And I know technically you have to be very careful of what you actually describe because, you know, sure. medical stuff and all. Now, I know for sure that you know what our last question is because I have <laughs> made sure of this because yeah. nobody else seems to read the bloody email. <laughs> but we ask you, who would you, Angus Short, hire in a heartbeat? You know, it's funny you brought up um, my wife before because she actually, from an early stage... Uh, like she, she works as a press officer and she's a very talented woman, you know. If you say that's who you're going to hire, that's, <laughs> that's no good. Because, uh, that's only just kind of keep mm, making sure that there's no trouble at home or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, like if we, if she, I don't know if she'd, if she'd have us, but, you know, if we could hire Grace, uh, she like she's done an awesome job uh, for in helping us in lots of different ways. And, you know, we'd love to. That is lovely. Yeah. But it won't get you, uh, you still have to buy a big present. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, <laughs> what is yeah. Grace's surname? Whittle. Whittle. Okay. Yes. And um, the, uh, so she is definitely your, your heart in a heartbeat, yeah? Yes. Good. Well, I think you're wise. <laughs> You've got safe passage, <laughs> safe passage home. Um, Grace Whittle, I'm sending you home now. Ingo's short. I think you know him. And uh, actually, I was going to play on some words. He said he started working in air and now, oh, sorry, he started working in wind and he's still working in wind. So that's how. <laughs> okay. Ingo's short. Thank you so much for joining us on That Great Business Show. Thanks, Phil. And we love hearing from Team GBS members and we have a very regular chats with team members on our LinkedIn page where anyone at all can read about what's going on, what's coming up on the podcast. And if you'd like your business to feature on what you say is Ireland's best business podcast, use our LinkedIn page to get in touch with us. And that is it from That Great Business Show on episode 66. My thanks as always to the chefs of sound here at Dublin podcast studios head chef today was brian begley as he was sound engineer and remember team gbs wants to make many more podcasts so if your company wants the best podcast production team available do give us a shout you'll find us at thatgreatbusinessshow.com and we also want your ads wise organizations like big red cloud is me and others all know that the great business show is that great way to talk to ireland's sme so do talk to us about our competitive rates and we have a couple of specials coming up for you in the next fortnight with ireland's top venture capitalists brian caulfield joining me for one extended interview and then harry goddard the deloitte ceo will be here for another extended interview and as always we post all our podcasts every friday morning subscribe to 
the podcast and that way you will never miss us. You can also give us a review and to date, any that I've seen have all been five stars. So thank you very much. Finally, my thanks to our sponsor, DeFactoShave.com, the world's best shaving oil. Try it for just a week and like me, you will be a forever convert. So for me, Conal Moran, until the next time, Slan Tamil. Thank you.